All right, everybody, this is going to be a layout update for February 14th, 2020. We've got a good hunk of progress on the layout, everything from backdrops to the start of scenery. We've got a couple new per uh, a new purchase, a couple trades, and a couple projects. So, as always, well, let's go ahead and jump on into it. So we'll start over here on this side of the layout. Uh, this is the engine terminal side. Actually, we'll start right here. So since the last update, we got the siding put in. Uh, this is for the lumber yard. This is going to be for the house track slash TOFC track. Uh, and ironically enough, I had a piece of track with the ties all trimmed. And yeah, and, uh, I found it. After we put this in, it's supposed to go right there. So I don't know. I might change it. I might not. We'll see. Anyways, got both of those spurs put in. Uh, this needs to be weathered with gray powders. But other than that, as far as like the chalks, which is step two, step one, spray paint it. Step two, I'll go back with the grayish chalk and then I'm going to come and paint the rails. So the gray chalk step. This is like the last of it, aside from the stuff on the expansion, but that's still a ways off. So as far as the original layout goes, that's nearly one more thing done. But um, the thing I've started doing is getting finally back into patching up the scenery on this layout. So a couple things over here that have changed. Well, actually, I'll mention this first. Um, the switch machine is right up against the edge. And to have the rod high enough to line the turnout, it's catching on everything. So I've got the stuff for the uh, remote mount tortoise kit. I think I'm going to go ahead and bite the bolt and put it in here. So not my preferred solution, but... And I'm kind of hesitant to do it because this is going to come completely apart in a couple of years. But I mean... This is to the point where it just doesn't hardly throw and it's got to be helped. So, probably going to have to go ahead and do it. But uh, moving over here into this little corner. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this last update, but I put in a cork foundation for the depot. And then I came back and trimmed it to fit exactly. So there's, assuming I put this back on here, right? There's enough room for that rod to move over. And see now it's, there'll be enough rod for that room to move over and it'll still be, if you look down at, pretty much right at track level. So did that and then I took some of that thin foam and I built this whole lot up. I'll come back with some of the, um, the foam stuff to get that to the same level as sidewalk and then of course we'll have a little ramp going down to the existing road height. And then over here, we'll have the ramp and then one platform coming here. And then from there, clear over through here will be platform concrete between the tracks and then between the rails is going to be wood plank. So I'll either put those in hand by hand or I'll get some of those, a bunch of those, uh, like bare line grade crossing, wood grade crossing kits and cut them to fit in there. So did that, put in the start of a hedge right here. This will go to the backdrop eventually, but I just kind of wanted to have like a nice little, you know, if you can imagine it, this is all asphalt in here. Along the edge there, it stops. You've got dirt and gravel on your ramp and you've got a hedge. So you got a nice little separation hopefully between like, you know, a residential subdivision right here, which is why all three of those houses look the same, and the depot there. So, eventually I'll come back and put a different type of fence between those two and driveways and stuff, but for now, that's what I've got. And 
I'm just glad to be getting on to finally starting to patch up the scenery. So, the next thing I have done, uh, if we look in between the tracks, I've started putting back the cinders that go underneath the ballast. This was before I figured out how much alcohol and so isopropyl alcohol and soap to use in the glue mix. But, uh, it comes out better now, a lot better. So, I got it done, skipped the grade crossing. Came around here. I did leave that hole for now. Eventually, I'll have a switch machine on it. For now, it's just got a ground throw. And we got clear over here to the uh, table joint. So, that's what I've been doing there. Um, I do want to point out real quick, where in the world did they go? Uh, I've got, if you remember those Gap Masters. That's it right there. Yeah, right there. And you can't even tell. It looks like the rest of the track with the weathering. So, done that. About the only other thing I've done as far as scenery is I just did this today. I am uh, testing, trying to figure out which color I need to paint the rail. So, that is the final step in the track weathering. But, um, it, uh, man, that's going to be a pain in the rear. Because I can already see how tedious it's going to be going around this whole stick and layout. So, but it is worth it. Let me put it that way. I've come to the, uh, I've started shifting in the last about year and a half, realizing it's worth it for the tiny details that when you're putting them in, you think, oh my golly, Jehoshaphat, nobody's ever going to notice this. And then when you get to the overall picture, it's like, man, I'm glad I did that. And that's, one of them, one of those things that's tedious and you want to just stop. But once you get it done and ballast and everything, it's going to look pretty good. So, uh, put that there. If we move, actually, no, we'll just go here. Uh, this was going to be the end, but the stuff's here, so we'll do it. As far as new purchases and off of the workbench. Uh, this is an air project engine I'm doing. This is one of the uh, locomotives from the museum at NARM. Good old Astro Blue Box F unit, Santa Fe. And I'm just going in and wiring it for DCC for now. So if you notice, the shell has been slattered in liquid electrical tape. And then I've taken both of the contact strips, slattered them in liquid electrical tape. And then I'm going to do my usual trick of soldering the wires directly to the side frames. And then I'll just bring the appropriate rail. So one rail will come up and connect to the brass strip right there for the light, which I shortened. And the other is going to, the other two wires for the other rail are going to come on the bottom and they'll solder right there. And now my hand shaking right there in that little groove. So it's exactly the same functionality as the usual when it gets power up through the frame. Uh, I'm just isolating the motor now. So down the road, when we go back and convert this to DCC, we've already isolated the motor and the conversions that much easier. So uh, that's projects. Well, not projects. Other project I've been working on. This is one of mine. This is one of the box cars I did when I was beginning how to weather and it just didn't look good at all so this is the first car that i have completely stripped for my custom uh, hawking valley details so it still needs a little bit of work it needs the paint and then the decals i haven't gotten the spray paint yet but stripped it got the doors the other parts are sitting over there on the workbench they're fine. The wheels and trucks and couplers have all, and underframes already been weathered all out. I'm going to leave. But um, that's projects. I got one more, but I'll show it when we get over there. And then new purchases. Uh, Will, one of the guys from the club, I have had an undecorated Dash 944 CW in primer gray, which was a real thing. In the 90s, BNSF took an order of them. And they shipped them from the factory and just primer gray and BNSF painted them up in their own, in their paint shops. So that was a real thing. So I, he wanted that. And as much as I didn't want to get rid of it, I already had a UP-9 and face it, I got enough projects last me for 20 years. So I said, sure, I'll trade you. 
So he get, took that and I picked up a bow stopper. For now, it's Pennsylvania. Eventually, it'll get stripped. Uh, it's one of the newer ones, though. So metal wheels, Katie Coupler's metal grab irons. I'm amazed I haven't busted the stirrup steps yet. Well, the one stirrup step that's left. So traded him that and, gosh, a southern box car. I don't know what happened to it. And then a couple weeks ago, I was down at that hobby shop south of Decatur. Uh, all we'll have a video tour of it sometime, but I picked this up. It is a CNO caboose. I thought it was like... I thought it was the web ones, like the Proto 2000, because these are, if you look at the photos, literally dead ringers for the Hawkins cabooses. But I got it home and noticed it was metal. Uh, and Malcolm was nice enough to buy it for me, so you know what? I'm. It's fine. I'll work with it. It's got a built date of... Oh, gosh. What is it? Hold on. Let me look. I got to take my glasses off. Let me move that. 840 so it's still though it's beautiful and it's atlas so eventually it'll obviously have to get redecaled but um since i'm proto freelancing if the hawking had lasted independent never been absorbed at some point it would have had to update the cabooses so i figure you know if you're gonna update and the design works Keep the same general design, just wood, metal instead of wood. That's kind of like, you know, duh, the common sense thing. So these will uh, probably, I will probably keep the built date and these will just be a different class. But pick that up. So that's pretty much it for projects and purchases. Got one more to show you over at the workbench. But before we do that, we will meander over here and I'll show you a couple more things one being this uh changed it out from one of those ground throws that has contacts to this just put a little piece of foam underneath there secured it with some white glue and then i've got nails in there to hold it down and uh, i used to glue on my track work now i've become i've totally been converted to using nails for everything i use white glue for everything aside from gluing benchwork framing together, and then I'll use liquid nails, but everything else, scenery, track, cork. Well, cork to the wood and the scenery, I use white glue. And the track, honestly, it's gotten to the point where I just pin everything. I mean, because all the Atlas and the Pico stuff comes with, you know, places to punch out holes for track nails, and I just nail everything now. It's, I have been converted. So, anyways, uh, that's that. Over here, as far as the staging yard, let me, pardon the mess, let me move a few things. But, um, uh, I have put in feeders from this joint, and there's my big fat finger from this joint over. So we've got two pairs for each of these three rails, and did that because we've got, remember, I have toggles to turn these on and off, so. These two are gapped. I need to go ahead and gap that and then cut the, cut that one. But that's so here you can get part of this. Uh, and then the turnouts, I went in and I put jumpers underneath them. So basically the same thing that comes already installed on the Pico and the uh, Walters stuff. And the result of that is I didn't, I don't need to solder any feeders to this aside from just two on the outer rail. And I didn't even put that many on here because if you follow the path of conductivity, you got a feeder on this rail. It feeds all this through the gap master and then the factory built in jumpers underneath the frog over here and all this. So feeds that on this rail feeds all the way down through here. So I didn't need as many feeders. So all the feeders for these have been dropped. I went in and put screws on the frogs for the power of the frogs, and then I got the holes cut right there for the tortoise switch machines. And then the one other thing I've done over here, finally, I'm getting really, really close to being able to lay track. 
but um, got all this cork glued down. And again, this is white glue, so if I ever need to take it up when I, well, I will need to eventually when I get to the new, brand new layout in a couple of years, I can just wet it and take it up. Um, and then coming around here, you haven't seen this yet, but the turnout and then the back leg of the Y is in. Um, and yeah, sorry, I probably should have filmed this from the other side, but right there. And you see, I've restarted that gap master and I've got that gap master in. It's cut to, that's what I'm talking about. It lines it up perfectly. And by the time I weather that, you won't even be able to tell it's cut. So, did that. We've got another one right there at the joint. And then this is all pinned down. I didn't even use any glue on here. This is just nothing but track mills. Works out perfect. The only place I did use some was right there at the seam joint. So that's what all that's in. Uh, and then, of course, the hole for that has been done, too. I still got to go ahead and take the spring out of this one. And then obviously drill the hole over here because this curved Pico turn out uh, number seven, code A3, left hand. This one's an insole frog. Yeah, it's fine. I prefer electro frogs, but um, we'll go right there and then, of course, drill a hole for a Taurus. And this is just a little side ramble, but the reason I prefer electro frog turnouts is especially on the Pico. They have a really superior design as far as electricity getting from the stock rail to the points. And then by just making this whole thing on an auto reverser, it's just powered. And you don't have to deal with gaps and having to have two extra feeders on these two stock rails because of the gaps there. So everything's powered. So that's why I prefer doing it. I just think it does a better job of Less gaps, electrical continuity, and then you only need two feeders on these other two rails. And then obviously, I prefer Pico over Atlas because just the quality is so much better. They perform flawlessly and all that stuff. Can't always afford to get Pico over Atlas, but when I can, I love getting Pico stuff. It's just the, at least the best track on the market. But, um, Anyways, that's that. The other really big thing, you might have noticed this as we were coming down. Um, I posted this to Proto Freelance Small Railroads Facebook group. So if you want to see the in progress photos, I do post it on there. But the backdrop from that corner all the way down is in completely. It's, uh, it's in and it's screwed and it's anchored and... Everything's good. And then I even got that section of fascia installed. And we come over here. I got this section of fascia installed. So, uh, also, both plug ports there are in. Logo and I took that. They work fine. And then, eventually, I'll have those new rail model straw pockets. Obviously, two here. One right there. One there. So four plugs, four throttle pockets, four staging tracks. And then from about there, you can see my lines. From there over, I'm going to have a track diagram, track diagram on the fascia. And then on this end, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a vertical line right there. That's where I'm going to put the toggles to turn each one staging tracks on and off. And then, of course, I'll have, you know, uh, indicator LEDs for turnout position, indicator. Well, I don't need indicator LEDs for track occupancy, but have LEDs for turnout position and then have labels for all four of the tracks. So, and that's just part of the, my concept is that when I have people in here for op sessions, the walkway is really nice and wide over here. And I apologize about the mess, guys. The walkway is really nice and wide over here. Those normally aren't in the way. So that's like a two and a half, three foot walkway. It's easy to slip by somebody. Over here, it's wide. It's a lot wider than it was on the old layout. Like, you know, 
width wise, but still it's not the easiest thing in the world to slide by. So I kind of wanted it. So when you're picking up a train, you can turn track power on. You can line all three of those turnouts. You can even do the start of the Y down there all from this location. So the road crews are down here and then from here clear on up. The only person that really needs to be in there would be the switch crew. And there's during an operating session, there's not going to be anybody sitting at the desk. So you won't have to worry about that. And, you know, if I do like, you know, a couple of drops off and I have to swap out the box real quick or put it back on still, even at that, you're going to stand right here and you'll have toggles to run these three switches and you won't be in the way of the person sitting at the workbench and you won't be in the way of the people up there. So, uh, that's pretty much it. Last thing I want to show you guys, and I almost forgot about this, is another freight car project. Um, let me turn some light on here so you guys can see it. But uh, I picked this up. This was not the trade box car. This was different. But uh, I got to looking at this, and they had glued the doors on wrong, and the roof wasn't even on. So I got to looking at it, and I don't know if you can see this on the floor. Well, dang it. Trying to get it to where you can see this. But right there. So somebody apparently found this. You can really see it there. The uh, freight car four was busted completely in half at some point, and somebody came in and re-glued it. So, I mean, ex uh, kudos to them for getting this thing put back together from what was probably in pieces. As you can see where that was in pieces, that's a piece there that I got to glue back. It was just... So, I obviously, kudos to them for getting it. And saving the freight car from the scrap from the trash box. But um, I got to looking at it and there's still a couple things I can fix. So, you know, I'm going back and just like got to get that glued back. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall these. These are in here for bracing. So, eh. you know, glued in like that. Uh, they were just a little too high, so the roof wasn't snug. So I'll come lower, probably put a tab more weight in here, and then get the roof back on. So that project is in the works, and then, of course, weathering it all up. So, But, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much going to do it. So as always, uh, you know the drill, everybody. Shout out to my latest subscribers. Thank you for the subscriptions. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's, you know, apparently you guys find me interesting enough to watch even though I ramble. So, appreciate the subs. Appreciate the continued viewing. Uh, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, you know, all the usual stuff. And when you do subscribe, click that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload. So, as always, everybody, thanks for watching. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you on the next layout update.